Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Earth to Phobos video series that I'm putting together. In the last video, we have everything all set up for our trip. And we launched from the Carl Sagan Space Center in the using the HCLV launcher, the uh, la launcher that LaRue made. Very cool launcher. I think it's uh, awesome. And we got our XR2 up into a low earth orbit and we remembered at the last minute to open the radiator i almost forgot i tend to do that with the vertical launchers and uh we got transx set up for the maneuver to go out to mars so let's uh let's check everything out here there's a uh, some comparisons that we can make um, with our actual data now that we're in low earth orbit we can kind of compare what we actually have to our plan so let's um let's press f8 first of all so we can review our ship let's uh so uh, let's let me pause just to make sure that i don't well i won't pause i'll just go down to one tenth speed so our ship's mass is uh three zero point eight nine nine point eight seven seven let's uh compare that with our db calculator now, DB Calculator says it would be 30901.3, and we're basically that exact same number. There is going to be a slight difference now because we have started uh, consuming resources. We started using and started burning our locks. So, going forward, we will have a slightly lower ship's mass. We have 25% main fuel, and we're only carrying a half locks plus, uh, and that's it actually. We're not carrying anything else in the payload. So let's bring up burn time calculator now that we are in orbit and it says that we have um, this doesn't include the rcs so i need to put that in plus 803.9 that's actually a problem because we're gonna we're not gonna have enough fuel to complete the we're gonna have to transfer we're gonna have to transfer fuel during the during the TMI burn. Okay, so we have a total delta V of 3,747 meters per second. Let's see what we thought we would have. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it, isn't it just so cool when you can calculate something down to, the, down to a, a single digit? It just, it makes me happy, it really does. So we, we said that we would have 3,747 and we have 3,747. Now we are saying that our burn is going to cost us a total of 3,586.65. Now this will be slightly different because once we got into orbit and we set up a maneuver, you know, there can't, there's going to be a slight difference there. Uh, I can recalculate a new injection cost by putting in new data here. So uh, let me actually show you that. So in Transex, we're saying that our burn is gonna cost us 3,588. And you can see just how ridiculously close that is to that number. But again, the reason it's slightly different is because once we got into orbit, we dumped the, um, what was it, the escape plan? Yeah, we dumped the escape plan and we set up a maneuver. And the maneuver just is, is slightly different than the escape plan, so therefore we have a slightly different number. But just to prove to you that this is uh, just to just to show you rather not prove it but to show rather that we could still come up with that exact number down to the down to the decimal point let's go to uh, view maneuver and we'll just put in these variables uh, so it's going to be uh, that number we'll start here prograde three five eight six point wrong tab one four five Four six six eight two. I believe it was the last. Yeah. Okay. Now, in this case, our prograde, or rather, our outward and plane change should be zero or close to it. Okay. Actually, not quite zero, but outward is still zero. And this time, the plane change is uh, this number seventy eight eight three. Okay. And PE velocity according to Transex. 
I don't think that matters for the calculation. Actually, it doesn't, so we don't need that. So now we'll copy the formulas here, paste them onto that line, and you see here, where is it, the injection cost. That's different. Why is it different? So we must need the PE velocity. Do we? That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, let's double check everything. This number doesn't have anything to do with the PE velocity, does it? Okay, back to stage one on this side. View the yeah, 3588. So we're coming up high. So somewhere I put in a wrong number. Or I actually do need the PE velocity. Let me find out. So 3587. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, Th that that's... That's the difference. Okay, this time the total delta V is the injection cost. So that, that that's a little hard to explain, but when we're sitting on Earth, the total delta V that we get from a stage, uh, what, what is it, state, from the escape plan, doesn't, it, it's not the same as our injection cost, remember? But now that we're actually in orbit, the total delta V is the injection cost. I can't really explain what that is, but hopefully you'll understand. So here, the total delta V is 3,587.01, and that's within a rounding error. That's exactly what TransX says, 3.558K, and we have 3.587. So we're somewhere in here, there's a difference in rounding, and I could probably find it if I spend enough time. But anyway, you get the point we have uh, everything calculated correctly. Okay, so... Now, what's interesting, though, is, again, we don't, we don't have enough fuel to complete the burn unless we do a transfer. <laughs> so we are really, really pushing things. I am really pushing it on this, on this particular flight. Rotation. All right, let me rotate heads up. And actually, I need to be very careful in using my RCS for any rotations and translations and such. Just due to how limited the fuel is, I shouldn't even have done a one press of six there. I should have done a control six. And there I just used m more delta V. Really feeling the pinch on this one. Okay, so once I start the burn, then I'll have to go to the other view and do a cross feed. And we're gonna we can't cross feed all of the RCS because we will need some for translations and rotations, but we'll have to cross feed most of it. All right, let's uh, warp time four, get closer to the time to begin the burn. But before we do that, let me view over to <clears throat> let me view over to the escape plan. Actually, I was going to look at the line of nodes again, but you can't see it once you've... Yeah, I can't see it anymore. Okay, never mind. So view over to maneuver. <clears throat> or view over to target, rather. And let's press forward and get ready, to get ready to do this burn. And you can actually see here the delta V is changing, and the reason it's changing, I believe... is because our altitude is changing slightly. So yeah, so that's, it was 3588, now it's 3589, and it might it might actually settle down to that other number that we came up with, 3587.01. Uh, it might actually get down to that point by the time we do the burn. We'll see if it goes up or down. Okay, and then once we get down to maybe maybe 200 seconds, I'll start orienting the vessel because I'm, I have to be just so, so careful. Let's go forward a little faster. Oh, right now, control one. I should have started this sooner. So these are all controls, you know, control four to rotate. 
control eight to kind of bring the nose down a bit and then a couple clicks of control one to start yawing. Okay, and then we're coming around. Okay, now let's take out some of the roll because we're rolling too much. Okay, let me also, let me go down to 0 0.01 for a moment. Let me bring up burn time calculator and put in our DV3588. And then I'll click burn when it's time to do the burn and then cross feed. Right back to 1x. I think I probably cut this too close. I should have went with 35% fuel. On X, get into position. So it should have started this sooner. Okay, X is in position. All right, getting ready to burn. Burning now. F8, and we're going to need to start a transfer here quickly. Uh, now, in fact. Cross speed. we don't have enough fuel in the uh, main tank to do the to do the injection burn so we'll probably bring the RCS down to like 10% not actually sure where it needs to be oh boy I hate when Transex does that okay X is still reasonably close Been gone 37 minutes. Actually, I'm going to take the DV like all the way down to 5%. Warning. Cross right there. Okay. System reset. Now, let's uh, still have 2,000 DV to burn, and we've got enough here according to burn type calculator, so we should, in theory, have enough. Okay, now I'm going to do Translation. a little bit of rotating, just to center that green X a little better. Careful with the rotations, though. Okay, we still have 1,400 to go. We still have that much DV remaining. Okay, X is nice and centered. We're going to trust that uh, burn time calculator will cut off at the right time. It's never exactly right, but hopefully it will be within a few meters of being close. This is control thrust back and forth here. Haven't even left Earth yet and we're out of gas. So I really shouldn't be using much RCS for these maneuvers that you're hearing because it's all control thrust. But I think keeping the X lined up is important. Okay. So yeah, burn time calculator cut out and it was very close. It was less than a meter. So let's VW over to maneuver and quickly turn maneuver mode off because I'm very excited to see how we did. Actually, yeah, I'll bring that back up in a minute. All right, forward all the way to stage three. Yeah, could could have been worse, I guess. Translation. So hopefully we don't have to do a lot of fiddling here with translation. In fact, I'm not even sure if I should bother doing any additional correction. We'll do a little bit. But I'm definitely not going to 
worry about getting it super accurate. We just don't have the fuel for it. Okay. Good enough. And you can see that it's climbing out of control, and that's because TransX doesn't take into account um, non-spherical gravity sources. And I do have that enabled in this flight. Okay, now, what else do we want to look at? Let's bring up burn time calculator. And we now have uh, about, about a kilometer per second left. But keep in mind, as we go forward, uh, we're going to burn locks, and this number is going to continuously increase. Let's look at our calculators. We should gain an, another 830, 83, 836, we should gain. So by the time we arrive at Mars, uh, we'll have closer to two kilometers per second, but we will have mid-course corrections along the way. So this number will go up for a while, but then we'll go down once we do a mid-course correction or two. And I calculated that I would spend no more than 50 meters per second on, on mid-course corrections. And that might not be accurate because I'm going to Phobos and not Mars. All right, let's uh, let me just go through a mental checklist. Let me go back over to the HCLV real quick. And since it has quite a bit of fuel left, let's uh, put it into the retrograde position and send it into the ground. And we can do that with a burn of just um, about 100 meters per second. Let's actually do 150. Because if we look at orbit MFD, actually, yeah, we don't need even 150. Probably 90 will do it. That'll bring the other side of its orbit down low enough that it'll be in the atmosphere. So 90 meters per second burn. And yeah, that's way, that's way sufficient. So now the HCLV will go around, hit the Earth's atmosphere, and burn up. All right. Now, before I warp time forward, go out to Mars, let me just, let me first of all bring up Transex. Kind of always important to keep it open somewhere. All right, we have the radiator open. Everything is good. Let me do a, a look at our fuel. That's interesting. We can see we have 1% of main fuel remaining and just 3.5% of RCS. So cutting it very very close in this trip now let me actually transfer a little bit of fuel back over to now nah, never mind i was going to say i was transfer a little bit of fuel back over to rcs that way i don't get a mws warning when i launch the scenario but i will anyway because the main fuel is so low all right let me control s i like to have different save points uh, throughout the flight so that if i ever want to go back to a specific point i can so i'm going to save here at this point now, let's, uh, let's warp time forward. What we're going to do is we're going to warp time forward and we're going to watch the closest approach. First of all, actually, we need to get out away from Earth first and foremost. So we don't even care what the closest approach says until we're so far away from Earth that the stages have had a chance to update. And it looks like we're leaving here. We're going to arrive here. No, we're leaving here. We're going to arrive here. Okay. Goodbye, Earth. Swarping time forward at a thousand for now. And I even need to watch. I even need to watch that I don't waste uh, RCS by stopping the rotation of the vessel. And there's one way I can do that a little bit more efficiently. Dimitri showed me this. If you reference the sun. Copy that information over to the HUD. And of course, I can reference Earth again now, but I got the sun up on the HUD. Warp time forward until the vessel is facing prograde to the sun or close to it. About right here. And then just use your, uh, use your rotation. Rotation. And again, use control rotation. And we're going to rotate up a bit until we are facing right at prograde.
Now I'm gonna hit kill rotate. Let me actually rotate a little bit more over. Until you're basically facing perfectly prograde. Then kill rotate. Now you won't have as much spinning around. You'll, you'll still have it and you'll still have to do this correction again, but you won't have as much. Um, and I think, I'm not sure if it has, I'm not sure if it works to do this until you're outside of the Earth's influence or not, but we'll see. So warping time forward now at 10,000. You can see it's starting to slip a little bit, but uh, that's just one way to orient the vessel and, and so that when you get up to warp factor 10,000 and 100,000, it's not spinning all over the place. Any, and anyway, now we're out of the Earth's uh, gravitational influence, uh, out of its strong gravitational influence. We're still in the weak, but we're going to warp time forward, and we're going to watch the closest approach here. This is something that Dimitri taught me. You can really cut down on your cost, on your mid-course correction cost going to Mars, if you warp time forward until the closest approach is as low as it's going to get. Uh, you'll notice currently it's going up, but it'll go up for a while, then it'll come back down. Now let's uh, auto-reference because we're into the week, and we're going to go to 100,000. And you can see now it's coming down, so I'm going to watch that number real closely. And when it gets really low, as low as it'll get, and it'll take a while, then we can do a bit of a mid-course correction. And once we do that, we'll probably get think about calling it apart. So you can see, oh, now it's going up. I actually, I missed it by a little bit, so it's going to be slightly inefficient. But, uh, but it's better than, you know, it was at 500. Actually, now that I think about it, let, let me think about this for one second. I'm not sure if I'm far enough out into the, into the plan yet, because I seem to recall, I seem to recall him telling me to, uh, skip the first time that it gets to the lowest point and keep going until you're like out here like at a 90 degree angle can't really remember so i'm going to go ahead and do the mid course correction now um, actually maybe we don't need to look at that we're showing a minimum altitude of only 9,000. so there's certainly no need to set up a maneuver if anything i could just do translation you know, a translation. I mean, this isn't even a whole meter per second. Yeah, so we'll do it this way since it's still so close. But I do need to start thinking about Phobos because that's the, that's, the, that's the goal is to arrive at Phobos. So let's not forget about that and let's start putting that into our plan now. <clears throat> okay. Also, let's uh, see what our DV is because we will have gained some DV since we've burned through some locks. Let's see what we've gained. We're up to 937 and I don't remember what the number was prior. Uh, actually, this is wrong because the fuel mass is not 803 anymore. Let's put in the new fuel mass. So actually, whatever I said before, I think it was also wrong. So RCS is actually 24.7. Is that right? That's, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, we're cutting it really close. So, all right. Whatever I said back at Earth was, was completely wrong because I said it would be almost two kilometers by the time we arrived at Mars, and I but, but I forgot to check the RCS, so that was completely wrong. All right, let's set up view setup target uh, Phobos, and also while in view setup change to a graph projection that doesn't look so stupid. Focus doesn't look right this time. Actually, focus...
probably is right, but we are we're showing that we're going to be highly inclined essentially. I might have to change my plan because I just I don't think I have enough fuel to do what I'm trying to do. Maybe. I might just have to land at Mars. And we'll see. Let, let, me, let me just process all of this. Okay. okay. <coughs> if I'm understanding what I'm looking at here, I would arrive at... Mars with a like almost a 90 degree inclination to Phobos is that right let's see let me do this uh, var to none my inclination yeah that's right because my inclination is currently showing 105 degrees in Phobos is it's not equatorial but it's a lot closer to the equator than that so as part of this mid course correction here rotation translation while i'm still way way out away from mars i'm going to actually go ahead and do i'm going to set up a maneuver because i could potentially burn a lot of fuel just trying to do that manually so view to uh, maneuver on this side Maneuver mode on, and all I want to do here is just uh, small adjustments so I can bring the inclination closer to the equator. That's the wrong direction. Okay, that's better. Okay, so a little bit of negative prograde, and probably, I don't think it really matters which other variable we use. Something else, though, to bring in the minimum altitude. Um, actually, it might matter. Let's not do outward. Let's do plane change. Okay, so that's bringing the minimum altitude down and bringing the inclination down. That's what we need. Now, what we need the inclination to be, Dimitri actually just showed me this really cool spreadsheet. I should probably use it to set this up. But basically, if we look at, um, if we reference Mars and target Phobos, and we need to have, in this case, the frame of reference absolutely matters. It has to be equator, uh, ECL, it has to be the ecliptic. Uh, the, the inclination is 26. Okay. So, so that being the case, we've actually brought the inclination down too much. Okay, so something like that. Now let's go back to prograde and bring the altitude down a bit. We're going to have to play with these variables back and forth. going the wrong way so something like that so that's got the inclination about where we need it and the minimum altitude for this is good enough because we're never gonna it's never gonna stay because we still got a long way to go to Mars but if we look over here we can see that the Delta V is only 1.025 rotation um, I don't think it's even worth using the rotation to do that Although, it's kind of hard for me to figure out what I need to do if I don't rotate, get the X centered. Rotation. Translation. Translation. So let me just rotate very carefully. Fortunately, the X is here. It's not in some off position, so I know which way to rotate. So control uh, down, which is 2, and control 3, and that will bring the X into the center position. Although we might need some more control down. Okay. 
Yeah, we do. Okay, so control or five to kill. Control two. And that gets the X lined up. Okay, that's good enough. Now, before we commit to the burn though, let's do an update on the maneuver because some time's passed. And you can see it changes things a little bit, so not bad. All right, now, view back over to target. Translation. And with just a you know 1.026 meters per second. All right, now turn maneuver mode off. And we're pretty close. Okay, so that is going to be it for this part of the video. We uh, completed the first mid-course correction. Hopefully we won't have a lot of that to do because clearly we do not have the gas for it. <clears throat> but we're still going to gain some DV as we go forward because we're going to burn through a lot of locks. Something else I could do if I absolutely had to would be to dump the CHM in an emergency situation. But we won't we won't consider that an option until we're like at least you know really close to Mars because the crew needs the CHM you know because we still have uh, you know we still got quite a bit of time until we're gonna get to Mars so the crew needs that living space. But in an absolute emergency situation, I would say when we're within the weak SOI of Mars, we could probably realistically dump the uh, crew habitat module in order to gain some extra DV if we had to. But hopefully, it won't come to that. If you like this part of the video hit the like button down below leave a comment i like comments more than anything i couldn't care less if you hit the like button or not if you don't like the video thumbs down the video vote with your thumb and if you like all this space related content be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed facebook link in the description down below so you can kind of follow my fan page on facebook if you want and i will see you in the next video